Healthcare in America, it is the costliest in the world, but is it the best? Not according to a report by the Commonwealth Fund, which actually ranked the U.S. dead last in a study that included seven nations. The report looked at factors such as quality of care and access to care. But look at the cost. If you combine the per capita, per person costs of the top two nations on this list, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom, you still don't equal the per capita cost of health care in the United States. Now, the challenge here in the United States is not an easy one. Improving the quality of care while lowering the cost and expanding coverage to all of those people who don't have it. It's why Farid Zakaria is devoting his first GPS special of the year to laying out a roadmap for saving health care. Now, the special debuts Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Farid, you have searched the world for a solution to this health care issue to try and map that onto the United States. What have you found? Well, you know, in Taiwan, which is a free market country with a very vigorous free enterprise system, they had a totally free market health care system in the 1990s. They asked themselves, we want to go from scratch and build a new one. And they studied all the models in the world. And we asked the guy who designed the Taiwan health care system, what did you learn from America? Right. He said it was very easy. From America, you learned how not to do it. Wow. He said that there was really nothing they could get, borrow from the American case. Our system is just a total mess. In Taiwan, what they decided to do was they decided to go for a single insurer, but mm -hmm. private providers. So right. the hospitals are private, the doctors are private, but you have a single, essentially government-sponsored insurer. Right. In other words, Medicare. Right. Uh, and not Paid for by tax dollars? Paid for by tax dollars. Not surprisingly, they have the lowest health care costs in the world. Mm -hmm. they're, they're up there. They're among the best in terms of the outcomes. But they only spend 7% of their uh, economy on health care. We spend 17%. And we're going to take a look at a chart which shows the, the steady increase in per capita spending on health care in the United States, or, or as a share of GDP, let's put it that way, starting at around 5% in the 60s up to this 17-18% uh, that we've got now. Yeah. Freight, let's just discuss this for a second, because there are some people who think market-based systems work best where there's competition, and yet some of the most efficient health care systems in the world are single-payer. Uh, whether you want that to be a, a socialized medical system or just like you described in Taiwan, one payer that has efficiency and has the ability to, to control costs through negotiation. Square that circle for me, because one seems inherently anti-capitalistic. Health care is a very weird um, field. There was a Nobel Prize winning economist, Kenneth Arrow, who in 1963 wrote a brilliant paper predicting that healthcare wouldn't work on regular market econ economics lines. And here's the reason why. You don't know when you need to buy healthcare, mm -hmm. and at the moment you need it, a heart attack, a stroke, a hip replacement, you don't have that much money. So you can't, the, the normal market can't function, you need an insurance system of some kind. Right. Now, of course, it's possible that you were to say, well, look, you know, the market would work if you were to just say, you had a heart attack, you can't afford it, sorry, mm -hmm. you, you die. But every rich country in the world has decided that's not how we want to run things. Mm -hmm. We want to have, give people some basic access. And once you make that decision, you have to have an insurance system. You talked very correctly about the, you know, the issue of access and cost. What I found is that every other system in the world found, in order to bring down costs, you have to have universal coverage. Because otherwise, you have a downward spiral in insurance where mm -hmm. basically the insurers try to kick all the sick people off the system. And keep the healthy people on keep the healthy who people. don't really want to get insured in the and, first place. And the healthy people don't want to buy yeah. insurance. So it's a kind of, it, it's a weird game where everyone's trying to game the system. So the, 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 these countries that use a single-payer system that take the money out of taxes, by doing so, that means everybody pays into the system, sick or healthy. Here in the United States, that's the part that's under challenge uh, at the Supreme Court. The idea that this health care administration, this administration's health care reform plan uh, wants to compel people to buy insurance in the same way that Taiwan taxes, in the same way that Canada taxes or the UK taxes. We actually have a, a perfect example, and we talk about this in the program. Switzerland, 20 years ago, had exactly the system we do. And again, Switzerland, very free market uh, country. Right. Actually, Switzerland ranks higher than the United States on the Index of Economic Freedom, which mm -hmm. the Heritage Foundation puts out. The Swiss realized 20 years ago they were having all the problems we are. The ones we were just talking about. The healthy people don't want to buy it. The sick people keep getting thrown off by the insurance companies. So they went for a, an individual mandate. Mm -hmm. Pretty much reformed the system along Obamacare lines. Mm -hmm. The result is they've had lowered costs, higher quality, 
huge customer satisfaction. So I can't speak to the constitutional issues. But what I can tell you is every system has found that if you don't create some kind of either individual mandate or, as you say, just a simple universal system, the, the, the model can't work mm -hmm. because you have to bring everybody in to spread the cost, to spread the risk, and then you work on the really tough part, which is uh, cost control. Sure. And that means you've got to have somebody. You, know, you can call it what you will. It has been demagogued as death panels. But you've got to have some board of experts saying, this is covered by insurance right. and this is not. And again, that is something that happens in many countries. Every other country. Where a 93-year-old person who is in hospital with some, uh, what would be a terminal illness, isn't necessarily deemed to be chronically ill at that point. There are decisions that are made about whether or not this is worth spending. Sanjay often says that we spend uh, most of our health care money in the, in the last months of, of life, the last year right. of life. The two uh, crazy statistics about health care, 5% of the patients account for 50% of the cost. Right. So when people say, you know, high deductible plans will work, no, they won't, because the real costs are all in those chronically ill, right. those seriously ill, who would be covered by catastrophic insurance or, right. or, or anything. And the second part is we fight death. Yeah. Um, most other societies at some point accept it. Uh, and at the end of the day, nobody's saying you can't at 93 get that second hip replacement. The point is insurance won't pay for it. Right. That, that, at right. that point, the you market can You, want, the, you right. can do what you want. The yeah. point is your insurance uh, program can't pay for it. Yeah. Otherwise, the whole system goes bust. You're prepared for the fact that you and I are both going to get hate tweets about this, right? You know, what I've tried to do is really ground this in fact. Yeah. What I've been struck by is that the whole argument against some government involvement, first of all, ignores the fact that we have huge government involvement right. in, in Medicare as right. basically right. a Right. You remember that sign during the, uh, during the uh, uh, objections to Obamacare which said, government, get your your hands off my Medicare. Right. But the second part is that everyone who makes these arguments against the government, it's, th there is some fantasy theoretical version of health care that they talk about. But you know, I, I'm a practical guy. What I say is you can reason from principle, but you also got to reason from facts and reality. We have 20 other countries in the world that do this. All of them are able to do it better and substantially cheaper than us. So uh, to me, it feels like the task is not to junk all this and say there's some utopia out there that's never been tried right. in any actual human society, rather to say, look, we've got a messy reality with the government and markets working together. Let's fix it.